On behalf of the White Lake Area Historical Society, I would like to invite any members who have not picked up any information or been given any. This is available and this sum is on the table where you checked in. There are maps that are available from old time years if you would like one on our way out. And our next meeting is June 16. It's the third Thursday in June. It will be at Kim's Bur Kim Burke's Little Red Brick House on Stan Boulevard. And we are hoping for good weather. Be sure that you bring chairs and insect repellent because probably by then we'll need mosquito repellent. And so I would like to introduce Sherry Monzo right now, who has put all of the display stuff together, and Paula Martin, who is going to be the presenter for the evening. And before we welcome her, I will apologize because I have to leave for a rehearsal that was scheduled for tonight at 7. It's already started, and I'm not there as the accompanist. So <laughs> it breaks my heart. I was so excited about this presentation. Sherry and I have talked about it since last fall. Mm -hmm. And here it is. And this is Sherry Monzo. She is taking over at this point. Help me welcome Sherry, please. Welcome, and thank you for coming. Um, I want to thank Cheryl as well for asking me to help out with this because I wasn't too sure. I'm a newcomer basically in the last seven years here at St. James. So I didn't know a lot of the history. Right now I'm the office manager here at St. James. And so I know the last seven years really well. But beyond that, I didn't know a whole lot. And so I dug really deep into the history, read a lot about it, and I'm going to share some of that with you in PowerPoint. Oops. So the seeds of the Catholic Church here in the White Lake area were sown long before St. James ever became. Um, in 1951, Bishop Francis Haas deposited a cornerstone in the addition of St. James that was over um, on Slocum in Montague that the grace of the Holy Spirit has hovered over these shores since the days of the Indians. Father James Marquette was here as a missionary, and Father Frederick Barguera, shown to the right, raised the missionary's cross here in the 1830s above the first Native Americans who dwelt in the White Lake area. This here is the original St. James Catholic Church that was built in 1875, and it was built in Whitehall, and it cost $3,000. In 1876, they decided it was a good idea to pull it across the lake and move it to Montague. <laughs> so originally it was at the corners of Slocum and Baldwin Street and it was pulled across the lake to the corner of Sheridan, Williams and Hancock in Montague. This was the inside of the original St. James Church building. And this is a picture of the original St. James building after the exterior renovations in the mid-1990s. Uh, oh, not 1990s, I'm sorry, 1950s. And this is the groundbreaking for the renovation in the early 1950s. And these are some pictures of the priests that were laying the cornerstone for that addition, the one that contained the document discussed earlier by Bishop Haas. In 1958, the cornerstone was laid for a new church building, which is where we're standing right now. Um, this is the present location of 5149 Dowling Street. The new church and school was completed in 1960, and the school was rented to Montague Public Schools until 1962-1963 um, time frame. 
That's when St. James opened their own doors for a Catholic school here. Sadly, in 1970, the original St. James Church was torn down, with the exception of the addition that had been put on in the early 1950s. That same year, a new convent was completed here, and the living quarters in the school where the nuns were originally were renovated into the school parish office and library and the pictures to the right show the groundbreaking of that new convent. <coughs> Over the years, the church has undergone many additions. This picture shows the addition of a larger vestibule. And in 2006, a new parish hall, narthex, and internal church renovations were completed. This here shows... Um, in 2006, a new parish hall, narthex, and internal church were renovated. Renovations were completed. And this picture was taken on August 6, 2005, during an ice cream social and groundbreaking ceremony for the new parish hall. And one of the reasons that we worked so hard on getting the hall and the new bathroom is that we, we were not accessible at all. All our functions were held down in the basement and our fish fries, and yeah, the fish fries started in the basement, and the, I think it's like 35 years ago or so, and people had a difficult time getting down. The bathrooms weren't accessible, so we really wanted it to be accessible to everybody in the community and in the parish. So that was the main focus for adding that hall and all the, and the accessible bathrooms. And another little ditty is in the basement they used to do roller skating. Roller skating. Yes. <laughs> yeah. My husband used to come here and roller skate. I've heard that from a lot of people over the years that I've been here that did you know we used to roller skate in the basement? I said I had no idea. <laughs> the pastor we had at the time loved to roller skate and that's why he had the floor coated so that it could withstand the roller skate skating oh and the railings put along the walls and everything. And wow. Skate rental and the whole day. It was so fun. <laughs> Mr. Cortez was the one who ran it down there. Yeah, yeah. I remember. Yeah. 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 Who did? Patty Myers. Oh, Patty Myers, too. Yeah. <laughs> This picture was taken in the early, um, early September 2005, and that was when the walls of the new parish hall were just beginning to take shape. Um, this I got from old bulletins, and it's just a picture where they joked that it was the first meal in the new hall. It was the Knights of Columbus, and they were helping, volunteering, and there, as you see, there aren't not even walls up really and they considered it the first meal in the new hall but the first official fish fry in the new hall was on march 3rd 2006 and they served 520 people that year this i came across in my searching is a picture of the rooster weather vane that sits atop of St. James. And I've always wondered, why do we have a rooster weather vane? Well, and I was, as I was searching things, I found um, in the March 19, 2006 Parish Bulletin, Father Chris wrote about the weather vane, and he said, Legend has it that around 9 AD, the Pope mandated all churches in Europe sport a rooster. Besides being a reminder of the cock crowing, in the case of Peter, the rooster is said to be an emblem of the Christian's attitude of watchfulness and readiness for the sudden return of Christ, the resurrection of the dead, and the final judgment of humankind. I just thought that was a cool story behind, behind the rooster. <laughs> um, this picture here shows the parish offices prior to our newest building addition, which we are sitting in right now. Um, that's where the old offices used to be. This part of the building wasn't even here yet. And this is 
St. James today. And then this leads into our newest addition, the church bell tower, which I will allow Paula to take over because she's the expert on the church bell here. <laughs> I'm the dingling girl. <laughs> Good job, Sherry. That was awesome. I'm going to kind of start in the middle of this story. So my son was going to graduate from Whitehall Schools in 2007, and I was his class advisor. So in 2005, let me, let me go back a little bit. Always in the courtyard, because I grew up in Muskegon, so when I got here, in the courtyard of Whitehall Schools was on an old dilapidated car, was a big bell painted red and white. When they built the new high school, they took, they had to tear everything down, they took that bell and it literally sat in the parking lot on the ground for a year. And I thought, wouldn't that be a cool senior project for the class of 2007? So Bob Hyatt and myself, we got the bell loaded up and we went to a place in Muskegon called Spec Abrasives. And it's owned by Jim Perot. And we said we'd like this sandblasted because we want to clean it up and put it in front of the new high school on a big base. So he started scratching through the layers and layers of red and white paint and he said, he called me and he said, this is solid bronze underneath here. So he started very gingerly sandblasting it and he came across, I, did those pictures come through Sherry? Oh, I'm sorry. He came, the, the, he came across some letters, so he came across some letters and numbers on there because all those the paint it was all smooth because there were so many layers and when it said on there it said it was made by the Henry McShane Bell Company in Baltimore Maryland 1885 and there was also a number imprinted on there 934 so Jim the curious man that he was he started googling it looking it up looking it up and he found that the Bell Company was still in existence in Maryland. So he called them. And he, they said, well, for a small fee, I think it was like $300, we will give you the history of your bell. So, all right, that's cool. So we, you know, I sent the money in and we waited. And we waited, never heard, never heard. So finally I called. And I said, you know, we, they said we can't find anything on this. And I, you know, I told him, I said, there's a 934 on the bell. He goes, and literally while I was on the phone with him, he goes, just a minute. He said, we have the old ledger, the old original ledger from the 1800s. They had had a fire, so he had, they had the ledger under glass. It was so fragile. He looked it up, and he said, the nine, each bell had a number on it. In 934 was how much it weighed, 934 pounds. And so he, he looked it up and he said, there is nothing in here about this bell coming from Whitehall. He goes, have you ever heard of a town called Montague? I went, yes! <laughs> yes, I did! And then he told me that that bell... And, I, and you'll be able to see this, I think there's up in the book and I have a copy of it. That bell was ordered by the Reverend Lefay in 1885 and it was delivered on July 30th. It cost 18 cents and the mountings were 40 cents. And the bell Itself weighs 841 pounds and the springs are 931 pounds. And so I went, oh my goodness. And so I called Father Chris. I was out of my mind screaming and stuff. I go, oh my God, oh my God, you know. <laughs> so how did the bell get in the Whitehall parking lot from being at St. James? This is what happened. 
All right, I have to have my little cheat sheets. Here I go. So, 137 years ago, in 1885, the Reverend Lefay ordered the bell. It was delivered, and it was put up in the church on Sheridan. And there, there it was for 73 years. When they went to build the new church, the Burrell family, who was a family that was in the church, and they have a lot of kids. My, my husband used to hang out with Don. They bought the house. They used to make pizzas in there. They had a little pizza business and stuff. And my husband remembers ringing the bell, you know. And Now, Mr. Burrell took the bell down. How he got it down, I cannot even imagine, out of the tower. And he gave it to a man named Ken Owens. And Ken was a president. And they were called the Town Criers. And it was a Whitehall Booster Club. So they got it. And another member of our parish, Denny Kroll, was in high school at that time. And he remembers his high school job well, during the summer was painting the bell red and white. They built the cart. They put the bell on the cart. They used to, you know, cart it around in parades, bring it to the football games, ring it until the car became so dilapidated that they put it in the courtyard at Whitehall Schools. In there it sat as a background for homecoming pictures and all that until they moved it to the parking lot and that's where I found it. So, this is the, I mean, wow. to me, that's a God thing. That's, you know, that, that me, a member of this parish, would find it and, you know, it's just, in that it was not destroyed, sitting in a parking lot, snow plows, buses, kids. there wasn't, yeah, kids, no, you know, one, yeah, and it was solid bronze, so it's got to be worth big bucks, I'm sure by now. Is this the bell that sat in front of the old high school? No, no, not, no, it was, it was on a cart. There was another bell that was in front of Whitehall High School. Oh, yeah, they kind of sent Kitty It's still, there. the, it's, there's. That's gone. That bell's gone now. So I'm thinking you, that's the, that's the bell that you have, because that is no longer there. That one that's right in front of the old high school? The old, old high school. I think they moved it to the new high school. No, no, I moved, I have a smaller bell that I moved to, and I'm, yeah, that's a whole other story. That's a whole other story where that bell came from. So, I don't know. The, the one, so originally we thought when we built the little signage out in front of St. James, there's a little place for a bell. And we thought that the Montague Whitehall bell that went back and forth for the football games, we thought that was our church bell. So, a member of the parish, Bill Bartholomew, bought another bell, had it painted, donated it. We cleaned up that bell, put it out there, and that was there until we found this. We're going, that wasn't that, that wasn't the church bell. So that bell, there was a Montague Whitehall bell. Then I, I made like a little stand, and that's in front of the new Whitehall High School right now. Okay. So that's where that's in. It's a smaller bell. It's, yeah. a, it's very it's small. Yeah. So anyway, so then we had, okay, I got it. Let me, let me look. Okay, then we got it back. And then the, this Jim Perot, he also talked to this Mike Thompson, who said, and he was, it was Cadillac casting, and they cast the cradle for the bell for us. And they did all of this for gratis. They didn't charge us a cent. So then we had the bell on the cradle, and it sat in our hall. And every once in a while, I think when it was like for fish fries, when it was time to announce a 50-50 winner, somebody would ding it or something. In our, in our whole... You know, we always wanted to put it up, but that yeah, expensive. You know, and so it just kind of sat there, and it's a little place of honor. And then, Father, what was it? Three years ago, yeah, three. that someone approached Father and wanted to donate. It's an anonymous donor wanted the bell tower to call the church, you know, people to church again. And so then COVID happened. So then we had to wait on all that. And we had to get, you know, zoning permission and blah, blah, blah. So l last year, last June, I think it was, we finally got the bell tower up. 
And here's the kind of freaky thing. I always said before I die, I want to get that bell tower up. A month later, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. Again, I'm going, Lord, I'm not ready yet. I got stuff to do here. <laughs> so anyway, so, so there it is now. And so we're just so thrilled to have it back with us. But of course, you know, and here's another little God wink. So the day we were putting it up, a man stopped by with his two grandsons. And he came up and he said, you know, I help with this bell. I said, Jim? It was Jim Perot. Oh. Oh. His son lives in Montague, is the Montague NBC principal, if I'm not mistaken. He was visiting his grandson, saw us putting up the bell, stopped. I mean, and there he was, and we, of course, let him ring it, you know, because <laughs> without him, we would have never found out, you know. Yeah. We were just going to, so that's kind of the history of our bell. So wow. it's a pretty cool story, yeah. It was amazing how the man just showed up. Yeah, he just like, yeah, he two just like. Us, two of us were just standing there and then he showed up. And he showed up and he, yeah, and he goes, yeah, I help with this. I'm like, Jim Perot, I mean, I, it was 15 years since I've seen him. I don't remember what he looked like or anything. So yeah, so that's the story of our bell. Do you have any questions or anything? Yes. What's the, uh... Did the school, the Whitehall School, have any issue with giving it back? Oh, no. John Van Loon was a principal then, and he's like, oh, my goodness, absolutely. You you need to have it. It needs to be back where it belongs. Yeah. They were fine with that. Yeah. So that's the story of our sweet little bell. And then you did said Bill Bartholomew donated a bell that they could use for the back and forth. It never was the back and forth bell, was it? Never. Okay. No. That's the, they carry it. The kids carry that on the field. So Bill had a new one painted. Yeah. So so that's the, the that's the deal on that. So thank you for listening. Well, I was asked to take people through the church if they wanted a tour of the facilities. So if anyone would like a tour, I'm I can take you all as a group. You can ring the bell. <laughs> Not everybody, but <laughs> the neighbors will get upset. <laughs> Isn't the bell programmed now? Doesn't it ring? It is programmed, but we have a remote that we can. Okay. All right. Father Peter could probably make it ring. <laughs> and we use the bell not just for mass, but for funerals and for weddings. Okay. So it has different uh, sounds. Yeah, there's two different, there's the ringing and yep. then there's a tolling. Mm -hmm. yeah. It will toll. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so as we're heading to the symmetry, the bell will be just uh, down there, almost for. And it rings the Angelus? Yes, Angelus. yes, it rings Angelus every every day at 12 o'clock and also 6 o'clock. Okay. But so that's the time for the Angelus. When you go to Rome, at noon, at 6 o'clock, even growing up in the seminaries, the first one, the bell rings at 6 a.m. No. Oh. No. <laughs> no. We couldn't get away with yeah. that. Yeah. 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 And then yeah. at noon, and then the last one is uh, at 6 p.m. So that rings, and they even wait for to Germany or some of the, so the bell is the voice of God. Yeah, mm -hmm. the voice of God. Yeah. I have one more thing to add that the there used to be a little house out here, that the, the brick building where Father lives, so that's, that was the convent, right? Mm -hmm. And then there was a smaller house, and I don't know who lived there. It was a convent. It was a rectory. Rectory. And then, and then we used it for giving tree, yeah. and there was a clothing closet in there. Well, when we built the addition, Bill Bartholomew again, he had it, bought a piece of property just down on Dowling here, and literally the house was picked up and moved, and it's down there right now. Just like the church. <laughs> just like the church is picked up. We're just moving stuff all over the place. Could I ask a question about the moving of the church across the lake? Because Montague has such banks on it. How did they get the church up the bank to where it was positioned? I think horses. 
Yeah, they yes, have draft horses. horses. They had draft but horses. they actually had a, a road made or something that this they could put it up? I don't oh. know if they, I, I just know they put it on skids. They, as they went across the ice, of course they had people in front making sure as they went slowly that the ice was safe for them to go across. And then they pulled it up the hill and it was with draft horses. And on the end of, of Ferry Street there used to be the streets that came through and down. Mm -hmm. So there might have been one of those streets that weren't oh, as yes. high yeah. as yeah. in the last. Yeah, because again, you know. this was 1876, mm -hmm. so yeah. I'm sure the contour of the land here is well, changed a little bit. It says here in your <laughs> history of your church, once across the lake, the church was skidded up the big hill to a location in a triangle bounded by Sheridan, Williams, and Hancock. Yeah. And I'm not real familiar with that area, but I, I think I know where that's at. And it's and then it stayed there for 82 years. Mm -hmm. but it fire. I'm sorry. It was caught fire a few years ago. And it burned down. Yeah. The balance I, of it. I yeah. think the stations on the there. cross are in the museum, if I'm not mistaken. Right, they are. They are. Yep. Yeah. From the old church. From the old church. The church. And I wow. think they all grew the old church. That's probably why they built this one. Yeah. So, but my thing is, why wouldn't they have taken the bell from the old church and put it in the new church? And why would Mr. Burrell give it to Whitehall? <laughs> Come on, Doc. What's up <laughs> They needed more. <laughs> so it said that they had found that there are more uh, Catholics that had moved to Montague, moved from Whitehall to Montague, or just moved from out by Larry. I think they were coming in from, they were moving in not only from Whitehall, but there were more coming okay. in, and they were all congregating in Montague. Mm -hmm. And so it just made more sense then. And I was telling my kids this, and they were like, Montague's not that far away. Well, we live in Wyoming. I said, but you got to remember, again, this is 1875. No cars. So it was no walking cars. or you had a horse and horse. buggy, you yeah. know. So there was no motorized vehicles to get you there. Yeah. Just a, a comment on the moving of the church. I was told a family story that my great-great-grandfather and his brother, Peter Dalton and James Dalton, were part kind of behind getting that church moved. They lived in Montague at the time. Wow. And uh, so... Um, we should write that down. Yeah. That's cool. And in 1885, I have on my wall a wedding certificate for my great-grandparents, Emma Dalton and George Mason, signed by Father Buffet. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Well, that's really cool. Yeah, that would be neat to have a copy of it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, I have to see what I can do. It's, in a, it's about this big. Okay. And it's, I even have if you could take a picture, yeah, even a picture of, it. of it, just yeah. so we could put it in our archives. Yeah. That would be cool. Sounds like a Jerry project. Uh -oh. <laughs> 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 I, I found that certificate in my uncle's basement when I was after he died. He went to the Catholic Church, Oak and Montague, but he lived out on Old 99 And so he waited for the priest to come around and go to the Catholic Church to do their service, and he'd hitch a ride on the buggy with him and go up to Playbanks to St. John's and go to the service, and then he'd have service here when he came in the town. But I never even knew he was Catholic. I didn't. Yeah, our our sister church, St. John's, is 150 years old, isn't it? Wasn't that what was celebrated? Yes. Yeah, 150 yes, years, years old. old. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that was that was That was right around yeah. and out to Playbanks. A lot of people get confused when they come back in because it all just kind of blends in. So they did a nice job of making it definitely good. Like it fits. I mean, it was brand new when we were here. They had just built it, and Monty was doing their additions. So we have classes here. Yeah, these were original classrooms. I'm not sure. Maybe. Do you know what was here before? There were the smaller. There were offices here. Okay. So this was still the office. That was the end of the building. Is this that where, where uh, who was here forever? She was the secretary forever. Leatrice Mahaski. Yeah, yeah, they're, 
there was um, the principal's office, one other office, a bathroom, and yeah, that, and, and there was a shower and everything in there because the nuns used to live right in the school. Until they built the convent. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and they lived across the street in that big house for a while. Oh, they yes, did. they did, and, and that's the house that was moved down. Oh, really? Yeah. Yes. That one was? Yep, that one, it's right at the corner there. I, I drove past over there the other day, and you can tell it's right. The two-story one. The two-story right? one. That's really close to the, the corner by the cemetery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the, the block and, yeah, the and, and the owners of uh, Montague Foods, one of the boys lives there now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. So this was all renovated in 2015. We'll see the chapel on the other side. If someone same there. bathroom. Ooh. Yeah, same <laughs> bathroom. We <laughs> added the new ones down there. <laughs> you don't have to walk quite so far. These were yeah. classrooms too. These, right? They just went yeah. We just kind of updated them a little bit. But yeah. these were classrooms. And there were six wow. grades here. One through six, right? One through six. They had kindergarten. They added kindergarten towards the end. Oh, did they? Mm -hmm. Okay. We added an environment room here to do flowers and all that stuff mm -hmm. with the sink. It's kind of a multi-purpose room where we keep the vases and the vestments yeah. and the oh yeah everything. Yeah, and I think the boiler room is in the, mm -hmm. yeah, in the very last there. one. The basement is down that way. I don't know if anybody wants to go down and see if they have the good memories of roller, roller skating down there. <laughs> There's still roller skates down there? No, no, no roller no. skates. <laughs> I don't know. Do you know when the, the back was renovated? The, when we added the hall, we also did the back to the church, the, that cement little curved thing there. And the stone, yeah. Yeah, we added that. It used to be slats of wood. Right. And that was added there. Father Joe Pettit did that. Yeah. And, and the slats of wood were behind Mary too, kind of made. And then we just redid with the the altar here. When was that Sherry about five years ago? Uh, probably three. Three that they put, you know, we put tile. the tile and then that in there that and made it hard. made the altar accessible because it was never accessible. So now we have the ramp there and over here there's a permanent ramp. So like People have hip surgery or, you know, anybody. Old priests. Was the chapel, <laughs> was that put in That chapel? was the cry room. That used to be the... Like a hallway. Yeah. Like a little hallway in there. Walk, it was a walkthrough to the school. Mm -hmm. But that was put in in... When we built... That was also hall, done too. when we did the hall. Okay, so yeah. 2005, 2006. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and then there was a library and a... Computer lab. There. Yeah, 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 right in there. That's what was part of that. We we have also have plans when we get money. Is <laughs> is to build right off there another like a little narthex in a hallway going parallel with this because right now if you want to go from the, the office and stuff you got to walk through the church to get to the yeah. hall to oh. get to the hall and we really think. Eh, We'd really like to have a hallway there, but again, money. When, when money, when we have enough money. So there was one stairway to the basement down that hall that we went past, and there's a, a stairway here, out here, and then there's another. There's three ways to get to the basement. But that's where we went for bingo and our fish dinners and everything. And, and bowling alley. Into the basement. basement. Yeah, yeah, yeah this is all the basement under the, under the church here. That's our cry room now. <laughs> this was put in 2005. This, this was put, right? put in 2005. The altar, the big slab on there, the Montague football team came over and picked the slab of marble up and put it on the new altar. <laughs> the logo. 
the, the chair that the priest <coughs> was in, that was made by one of our old pastors, Father Tom Schiller. He, did a, he made a lot of things like that. But yeah, this all was added in, in 2005. That was a huge renovation that we did then. And this is where we have baptisms now. It's not submersion, it's... Yeah. Born, it's so. And what the original part would have ended... Right here. Right it was here. stair. You walk out of the church and there were like three steps. That yeah, so down. this was the original church built in 1958-59 was it ended right here so none of this there was no narthex there was no there was one bathroom that was right here one <laughs> that was not good <laughs> the other two were in the basement yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, in the kitchen and for the giving tree. That's and the yeah, giving, oh, yeah, it's a real nice kitchen. It's really good kitchen. Compared to the one that was in the basement. That, they did a lot in that basement, though, too. But we moved, we moved the tables and stuff, and then, then most of it is from the basement. Some of the sinks, the dishwashers from the basement, we moved it all along. You can tell I was on that committee. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the friars come too? Some of the friars, I think they purchased they other ones. The friars, yeah. But it was, when we first did started the fish fries, yeah. when we got a hundred, we're like, woo! Yeah. And it, his, his brother Jim, oh my God, he was one of the friars, but they, they used to be down there, no shirts on, he used to use his hunting knife to cut stuff, and I'm like, now we got to wear hair nuts and the health department came in and then well, that was enough of that. <laughs> so we had Polish dinners here. We've had, we had, we, we used to have a bazaar here every year too and they don't do that anymore. That's when the school was here. Right. Yeah, the school was here one year and, and they were used, they used this hall and then it was, the school was done like in 2007. Yeah, because our, the, the enrollment was down to 36 students. Yeah. That's it. So we just couldn't keep it open. Mm -hmm. So anyways, but yeah, we love this hall. It is very nice. Yeah, mm -hmm. we love it. We got a little stage up there. Mm -hmm. Every once in a while. Like we do the, the Christmas pageant. The kids are up there in their little costumes. It looks so different without all the packages for the giving I tree. know. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, rows and rows and rows. In the acoustics, that's one thing, you know, live and learn. The acoustics in here were, were horrendous. You couldn't even have a conversation, so we had to put all these um, acoustical panels up. tiles and up and on the walls too. Yeah, it helps yeah. a lot. Yeah. Yeah, if you have hearing aids, it's especially bad. Yeah. So we love this little parish here. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Yes. I can take anyone outside and we can, I can ring the bell, toll it and ring it. Um, also, if anyone wanted to go down to the basement, <laughs> I can take them down there. Yeah, we've seen that. Yeah. 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 It's a big deal. Let's ring that bell. All right. Yeah.
just acquired a little bell from Sand Lake Church that was being taken down. To put it for, back in the sign. By the sign, because for many years we didn't have one there. And then one of our parishioners, who's a truck driver, was passing by Sand Lake and he seen that they were taking that down. And he was like, hey, what are you guys doing with that? I have a, a spot that would be perfect for that. And so we talked back and forth with them and made an agreement as long as it was going to stay in a Catholic church property and be respected the way it should be that we could be loaned the bell. So, in the that company one. that built the frame, the Verdon Company and the cross, they also put the clacker in because it, we didn't have a clacker with it either. For the oh. For the, the, no, the clacker, oh, the, the, the middle one. thing, yeah. yeah it was know. missing, so they had a, they had a build one. Awesome. Yeah. 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 Yeah.